this week on first days. Well, Although, once you get into stand up, you don't date stand ups. Oh, really? Well, I say that, but then I mean, you like, see Tom, Tom and Christina. Wife? Yeah, I mean they're. But they're. But like, they're miserable, right? <laughs> they're they're so miserable. You can tell. I was looking for you to top my story. I can't. That's I don't know that anybody can top. I mean, honestly, <laughs> sex in public stories. Like I've never heard a better sex in public story. Uh, but certainly more than boobs. Yeah. But which is not to say I don't love. Well, get some, off my show. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited to see you tonight. First day. Welcome to another Fabulous. Are you serious? Yeah. I can't talk. I have this effect. Can um, you just do the intro for yeah. me? <laughs> hey, welcome, welcome to another fabulous episode of First Date. Uh, <gasps> your next guest is me, uh, Shazam from Shazam, Thank Chuck you. from Chuck, Flynn Ryder from Tangled. I also wrote a book called Radical Love. It came out last year. Uh, it's all about uh, loving ourselves and others, radically accepting ourselves and others. Zachary Levi's here. Oh, my in God. In studio. And here is your question I here for me. Fantastic. Thank Great. Let me just, just get into this. Um, wouldn't that be fun? So. <laughs> just interviewing myself. Jesus. It's going to be amazing. I don't even need to be here. No, that's not true. Somebody's got to look hot. <laughs> Thank you. So you, this is I was my... talking about myself, but that's fine. God damn it. Damn it. You know, I will take compliments wherever they may lie. Get them. So this is a menu. I've got appetizer questions. Yeah. And then I have... Main course questions. Yeah, you do. And then some dessert. I hey! knew you knew. Is there any amuse bouche in there? I have some hors d'oeuvres. All right. I have a few. Okay. Um, do we need a safe word? Pineapple. Everybody says pineapple. I know. I don't know what it is. Why it's, pineapple? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, listen, in Chuck, pineapple was, it was literally written into the show as our like, a, like our oh, so security you're word. You're trademarking it. It's king. But no, but here's the thing, though. Even people who never watched Chuck, I mean, pineapple is kind of the weird random word that everybody chooses as the safe word. I don't know why, but it's kind of great. It's great that all of our minds, it's the collective consciousness, and we all recognize that if anybody just happens to say pineapple in the throes of passion, that must mean something different. Yeah. Unless you really love pineapple. Right? It's a very sweet fruit. Maybe it is. If it's your kink, you shouldn't use pineapple as your safe word. All right. So we got pineapple as a safe word. If I've seen any red flags, I'll throw them out. Green flags, too. Sure. Are you ready? Let's go. Start with the apps. Let's see here. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure? Wait, you mean just in life or like on a date or? This is called first. Yes, I understand. But I mean, you know, <laughs> that's, a, that's a broad, it's <laughs> a swath of, um, what's my guilty pleasure? Um, in life. What's your guilty pleasure? I mean, I feel like I have many guilty pleasures. I don't know. I don't feel very guilty about my pleasures. <laughs> Is that weird? Is that no. wrong? I don't, yeah, I don't, like I was saying, I think I have a lot of guilty pleasures, but I really don't because I just enjoy the things that I enjoy and I don't really you feel enjoy pleasure. guilty about them. Yeah. So none. I don't have any guilty pleasures. No guilty pleasures. No. Okay. What is something that you feel like you could teach me? Um, I... <laughs> I could teach you about a lot of the things I've learned in therapy. <laughs> My childhood trauma? There you go. <laughs> I can teach you all about your childhood trauma. Damn it. It's dark. I bet. I know. That's why we're here right now. It is why we're here right now. Yeah. What do you wear when you go to bed? Nothing. Do you sleep with it cold in the room? I sleep with it, I mean, like, cold-ish. <laughs> Like it should not. Well, listen, I mean, you know, again, per our, uh, you know, favorite uh, biohackers like the Andrew Huberman's of the world, um, they say you're supposed to cool your body down a couple uh, degrees in order for your body to really like go into the deepest rest. So I don't know, like I try to put the AC on, keep it around 72 ish or so, which is still not that cold. I know it's not that cold. Hear me out. But our bodies are. Uh, you know, a 98.6 degrees. So if I got it at 72, it's it's keeping it nice. And I also don't like where, you know, like I've got like just like a, a sheet and like a little blanket. I'm not using a comforter unless it's the winter time. And then I've got a little bit more of a situation. What a program. Yeah, it's a program indeed. What kind of sheets do you have? Do you have like silk sheets, linen, cotton, oh. flannel? Wamsata. 
I don't know. Uh, no, isn't that a brand or like a? Isn't that a? <laughs> isn't there a thing? I'm pretty sure there's a brand called Wham <laughs> Wham Sata. I don't know. I have no idea. They're like cotton sheets, but they're like high thread count, so they feel very silky. Yeah, to probably catch your sweat and the heat of things since you're sleeping with it at 72 degrees. What? What? I'm sorry. Are you living in a fucking igloo? What, Absolutely. What, what do you keep it at? 66. Um, if. I, if Probably 65. All right, so I can't stay over is what you're saying. <sighs> I mean, you'd freeze to death. Yeah, probably. You know what? I'll stay over, but I'll just get the comforter out, and I'll sleep with the comforter, and you can like just a, be... Well, like a little... Like um, a cocoon. What do you... What do you bean bag. Like we'll a, bean, little, no, a bean wait, bag? Wait, a sleeping wait, bag? A sleeping bag? <laughs> You know, I have love sacks. Have you ever had a love oh, sack? Oh, yeah. Ever- oh, I've, oh, I've had a love sack. I've got Let two. Let me tell you. Do you? Yeah. That doesn't surprise me at all. Right there for Why have one when you can have two? Um, are you a cuddler? Yeah, totally. I love, I love cuddling, except when, like, just post-coital and things are hot. Like, your body's I'm still, like, post, hot. Post what? Coital. coital? Post-coital, post-coital, like, post-coital? right after sex. Okay. Post coital. Come on, nope. stop it. Never heard that. You're playing dumb. I know that that's not real blonde. I know it looks like I do that often. Um, no, like, like you just like you know, if you've built up a lot of body heat from yep. doing the nasty, like sometimes going right in, <laughs> right into cuddling is not preferable. Like, let the body temp cool down a little bit, bring that shit in. But if you know, I need just a moment. I need a moment to breathe and cool down. All right. We're going to shift a little bit here. Since you were Shazam on Shazam and you know superheroes so well, who do you think would be the worst superhero to date? Go on a date with. Um, (laughs) It's a really good question. Um, And one I've never thought of before. Uh, You don't don't normally think about these things? Not. I mean, I think about the superheroes I'd like to be. I don't think about the the superheroes I'd like to date, um, but I have a feeling like the Hulk would probably be a little bit oh. of an issue. It depends on which version, right? So there's def there's the Hulk later in later years that was like he's like refined, like he's kind of he's the he's Bruce Banner and the Hulk kind of in one. Mm-hmm. So he's like he's acting like a normal human being inside, but he's all Hulked out. Yeah. But if you remember from the movies. Bruce Banner would turn into Hulk and Hulk would just lose his shit. Yeah. So I feel like that would be um that would be tenuous. That would be a difficult date to be on because like, you know, I don't know, all of a sudden you kinda you're at some place and the waiter fucks up the order and he's like, Hulk smash and he just wants to go crazy <laughs> and you're like, Fuck, he does this all the time and then you're just having to pay for everything. All he the doesn't time. remember it ever. Yeah. And by the end of the whole es- you know, the whole uh, escapade, he's now butt naked because he's ripped through all of his clothes and now you're <laughs> embarrassed. I don't know. That that would be very difficult. Yeah, I agree. But that would be more difficult for you, not for me, because I'm not dating dudes. That's fun all. fact. Yeah, fun fact. Um, what about a female superhero? Superhero? Just I can't talk on this podcast today. What about today? a female superhero? Um, uh, what a female? I don't know. They're they're all the female superheroes are pretty cool. What about I Wonder think. Woman? Like Wonder she Woman. might kind of like she's she's got to have she's got to be a little arrogant to be called Wonder Woman. But, I mean, Superman's called Superman, and yeah. he is. Humble as the day is long. <laughs> um, and so is Wonder Woman. I think they're great. They're great characters and they're super chill. Um, I don't know. Black Widow, uh, she kind of started as not a hero. She was kind Ooh, of a Catwoman. Catwoman. That, but be, she's more of a villain, though. I'd be allergic. <laughs> so would I. So that would be difficult. I know. Just like sneezing the whole time. Oh, you're like, oh, oh this feels great, but also, <laughs> oh, do you have any like. Zantac? No, what is it? Zer- Zertac. 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 Zantac, I think. It's okay. It's about time you fucked up reflux. a word. Listen, uh, I try not to keep pharmaceutical drugs memorized in my head. <laughs> Big Pharma, look out, guys. Continue. I will move on to main course questions. Mm. What is a deal breaker for you in a relationship? Everything's going well, and then this happens. Um... Well, like I need somebody who has their own thoughts and opinions and feelings about, I don't know, everything. 
Like I need somebody who thinks about shit. I've been in relationships with wonderful girls, but when it comes to unpacking big ideas or even small ideas, you're like, Hey, what do you think of that? And they're like, I don't know. What do you think of that? Yeah. Well, kind of. <laughs> and, but, but, but there's, that's a lot of like, um, that's a lot of, um, um, oh, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, codependency. That's, which is not good. You do not want to be in a relationship with someone who's codependent. Um, because they, they really are just kind of taking on all that you are and all that you believe and all that you desire and all that you see. And that just becomes a really kind of fucking boring echo chamber. And I don't want anything to do with that. Also, anyone who carries themselves in any arrogance whatsoever, like that, that is just not, it's a that's, turn off. that's not it. Yeah. It's just, it's a huge turn off. Like I think because that's a, an immediate indicator that they're actually not confident that they are compensating for that. So you know, I think I think those things are pretty big, big red flags. Yeah. You know, but also, I don't know the co the codependent thing. Sometimes that takes a minute to figure out, but arrogance re rears its ugly head almost immediately. It's like how somebody treats a, a waiter at a restaurant, or how yeah. they you know talk about anybody. Or I feel like that's always the easiest way to tell how someone's attitude is towards other people is yeah. at a restaurant. How do they treat towards, stuff? Oh. oh yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Or really just anybody in general, a fucking Uber driver or, you know, um, I don't know, you know, pick your, your job, pick your, your, your vocation that they're just trying to get through their day and do the best they can. And it's, you know what, it's, in, it's entitlement. Anyone, if I ever meet somebody who just walks with an air of entitlement, I'm like, get the fuck away from me because you clearly don't understand how blessed you are. You clearly don't understand how lucky you are that you are even in the position you're in in life where you're not that person, where you're not the teller at the bank, you're not the Uber driver, you're not the host at the restaurant. Like that you get to be the person on the other side of that, enjoying whatever services they're providing. Yeah. Humble yourself. like For real. Yeah. It's super important. Do you ever get jealous or do you get jealous easily? No, I don't think so. No, because I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to be with anybody who, if I'm with somebody and I'm jealous, it's because I don't trust them. Mm -hmm. So that's a bigger thing. You yeah. Know? Like what's the root of that? Exactly. If they're, if I'm with a girl and she's talking to a guy, like again, not like talking to like, you know, talking to them, like trying to date them, but I don't know, I'm dating your girl and we're at some party and she happens to be chatting up somebody or whatever. It really comes down to, do I trust her? If I trust her, then I know there's nothing in that exchange. If I don't trust her, then I start feeling, Oh God, what's going on? Is she talking to him? Because like, you know, but that's just really insecurity on my own part. So I feel like I've done a lot of work on myself. When I was younger, before I had any idea or semblance of who the fuck I was, you know, um, certainly I was in relationships where I felt more threatened or jealous, but I was, it's been a long, long, long time since then. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Ladies, summer is the worst time to suffer with an uncomfortable bra. Thankfully, Honey Love has revolutionized the bra game. Honey Love's bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift. Plus, they're made with fabric that's so soft, it feels like a second skin. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. It's so next level comfortable. You'll forget you're even wearing it. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. Get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link, honeylove.com forward slash date. Show your support and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash date. Honey Love's bras are so comfortable that I even wear mine to bed. Coming from a girl with double D's, it's important to me to not just be flopping around in bed. So I like to wear a really comfortable sports bra and Honey Love has it figured out. Honey Love has you covered for the everyday look, workouts, weddings, and more. Honeys, you need this in your life. You've earned it. Treat yourself to the best shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com forward slash date. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com forward slash date. Cinched, snatched, and lifted. It's hot girl season. Thanks to Honey Love.
Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after a night of drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol and drink responsibly. And then get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. This Halloween, pair your candy with cocktails with Zbiotics to avoid a spooky next morning. Go to zbiotics.com forward slash date to get your 15% off your first order when you use code DATE at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter what time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash date and use the code date at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. Do you think you have a type? Um, do I have a type? I don't know. Are you into boobs or butt? Oh, uh, butt certainly more than boobs. Yeah? But, which is not to say I don't love... Well, get some... off my show. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but you have a nice both. Thanks. What are you talking about? You haven't even seen my butt. I've been walking sure? what are you towards about? you the whole you time. <laughs> I've been walking towards you, not away from you. How would you know? <laughs> I haven't said bye. First of all, <clears throat> you walked here and here and sat down, and obviously I saw your butt. Also, I've seen your Instagram, so how could I not have seen your butt? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Your ass and tits are all over your Instagram. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, look, here's the thing. The re no, here we are, here we are. You just got me huge hits on my Instagram page, by the way. Thank yeah, you. there you go. Yeah, <laughs> check out this fucking hose Instagram, guys. Unbelievable. <laughs> TNA for days. <laughs> Clickbait. Um, no, listen. The the reason. <laughs> Star that moment. The reason. <laughs> the reason That's why. Red flag. Red flag. The reason why. <laughs> By the way, it is a little bit of a red flag. Um, <laughs> just saying, thirst trappy. Um, the reason why I, in that, if given the choice between butt and boobs, the reason why I will lean toward butt is because I think that butt is, more often than not, is something that is not just like a given genetic blessing. And it's more of an indication that a girl takes care of herself, that she works out, that she's healthy, that she's fit, right? You can have a very nice set of boobs that God gave you and you did nothing to earn and or a doctor gave you and you paid for them. So, but either way, it's not that I don't appreciate them because I do, <laughs> but if you're giving me the one or the other, I'm going to go with butt. Yeah. I grew mine. There you go. Not that you care, but I just, you know, fun fact. You, I've had some really nice girls ask me like, where did you get your boobs done? And it's always such a fun compliment because I'm like, Oh. <laughs> well, I grew that myself. As a matter of fact, <laughs> homegrown. <laughs> <laughs> On the farm. Um, so you've dated a comedian in Miss Maisel. Would you ever date a comic in real life? Are you asking me out? You're on my show. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, of course. I've, I'm trying to think if I've dated a comedian before. Um, oh, listen, I'm definitely not opposed to it, even though you guys are super fucked up. Um <laughs> Talk about darkness. Um, uh, no, listen, I'm a massive fan of stand-up comedy. In fact, I've done stand-up uh, before, about 20 years ago. Um, when I first started in Hollywood, I was working on a show, and um, some of the, one of the other actors on the show was a stand-up, and they really believed in me, and they, were, and they basically kidnapped me one night. They, 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 they said, you should work on like five minutes, like five to ten minutes. And I was like, okay. And then they kidnapped me and took me to Irvine to some like random open mic, and then I started doing comedy for about a year. And I was, it was like, it was, it was always good. It was never great. I never bombed. And I, and because I never fully bombed, I got to like, after doing, I don't know, like a dozen or not even a dozen, probably half a dozen, like, you know, appearances over that, the course of that six months to a year, I was like, all right, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. 
But the truth is I was terrified of bombing. And also I was 22 years old and I just had, I didn't have enough like life experience to really have a point of view. I didn't like, what do you, comedy is only as, to me, it's only as good as that comic's ability to see real life and comment on it in their specific funny way, right? Yeah. And I did not have enough life experience and I knew it. I knew it at that time. So uh, I say all that to say, I'll probably get back into stand up at some point, which means it would be very uh, <laughs> hypocritical of me to be like, no, nah, I'm not going to date a comic. <laughs> um, well, although, once you get into stand up, you don't date stand ups. Oh, really? I mean, Ever? well, I say that, but then I mean, you like see Tom, Tom and his wife. Yeah. I mean, they're, but they're, but like, they're miserable, right? <laughs> they're, they're so <laughs> miserable. You can tell. No, I uh, know they're wonderful. They're both fucking hysterical and successful and, you know, building a whole empire together. So like, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I do not discriminate just because somebody's a comic. Yeah. It really does come down to what is their soul about? Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about open relationships? Do you think they work? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've never, I've never been in an open relationship. I, here's the thing <laughs> now more than ever. Holy crap. I, I, I mean, Austin, LA, New York, it's like polyamory's everywhere. Everyone <laughs> wants to be in an open relationship. Um, and I have friends who are in them, who are stoked, who think this is the way. And I have friends that have been in them and it was one of the most miserable experiences of their life. I don't know. Again, it's this, it just kind of depends on how you, what lens you're looking through and what it is you're trying, I think, what, what life you're trying to go and live in, yeah. in your life, you know? Have you um, ever had sex in public? Like in a crazy public place? Public could be outdoors, back of a truck. I've had sex at Disneyland. What? Please explain. I just did that so you felt comfortable. Oh, no, I need to hear the story. Listen, I've had sex on a beach and more than just a drink. Um, so I guess that's public. Sex but it on was a like, beach with the sand didn't get in your way? I mean... You had a big beach towel? Um, we had a big towel. Like, on a cabana? No cabana, no. It was just like straight up on the beach. Um, there was definitely a little chafing involved. Um, <laughs> uh, in a car. Um, High school? Yeah, or just out of high school. Yeah, I, I feel like everyone did that. Yeah, that was your yeah, safe space. Yeah. But I'm not gonna lie, I always, I always had a dream of having sex on the People Mover in Disneyland. That's, I, I that's, I, I, I was like, that would be a lot of fun. I had sex on Pirates of the Caribbean. Stop it! Stop it! I did. I didn't, th but I was so naive at the time. How old were you? Like eight. No. <laughs> Not 18 or 19. Yo ho. I yo like, <laughs> ho. A pirate's life for this bitch. That's yeah, what's up. I swabbed the deck. Oh, yes, you did. I Wait, did. hold on. Wait, I got to know all these details. You were 18 years old. 18 or 19. 18 remember. or 19. Yeah. You're at Disneyland, Pirates mm. of the Caribbean. Mm. At what point in the ride did you guys initiate? Well, we had ridden the ride earlier that day. Okay. And we were like. And looking for cameras. By the way, I, this is also how I lost my virginity. This <laughs> what? You lost your virginity on Pirates of the Caribbean? Shazam! Come on! Hold I on just... a sec. So you wrote it earlier in the day. Were you guys like looking for cameras to make sure that nobody? No, could see you? that's what I'm saying. I didn't even think that there were going to be cameras. I thought that this was like because I wanted to go out with a bang, you know. And Clearly, I, you mean go in with a bang? You're not going out. This is number wanted, one. This was this the first. Had to be yeah a special moment. For okay. Me. So um I. Get on this ride. We go all the way around the thing and we get off and I'm like, you know, I think that that is like where we should the <laughs> do it. I love that like other girls are thinking like in a park on a blanket with a picnic and all of these like, romantic gestures. You're like, I want fucking I'm skeletons. I'm on a boat <laughs> with skeletons with swords driven through them. <laughs> Um, okay, so so you get back on the ride. So then we go back later that night at like 8.30. We get back on the ride. Right. We get our own boat. Okay. Because, you know, they have all the little... Yeah, like, yeah. You, go, so we yeah, get yeah. Our boat. you got your own boat because there were very few people going on the ride. That's right. Okay. End of the night. <laughs> so we go on the boat. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. And then Where I, in the boat were you sitting? The back, the, the front? Back. In the back. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And the boat starts going, and I just unbutton my shorts, and I sat on his lap, for like the whole ride. Uh, 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 reverse cowgirl? Well, it was reverse cowgirl. Okay, okay, okay. And then the, the, 
Oh my god, this is insane. Somewhere out in the world is a videotape of this. Maybe. I don't know. They probably deleted it. Uh, or they took it point. home with them and it's they're part of their personal spank bank. Who oh knows? god. Um, wait, so at so so you guys have sex and at what point so you did you like initiate like right out of the gut right out of the go? Oh, so as soon as it went into like the first little cave turn the corner that no one could see us. Okay. So So you go down the first hill. And the then, skeleton's talking to you. Oh, yeah, who go beyond here? You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Unzipping like, your pants. Yeah, yeah, totally yeah. skeleton face. And then you go down the hill, and now you're in the cave, and then you immediately jump up on his lap. Yeah. And then how long does it last? How, like The whole time. Like, until the thing ends. Wait, 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 wait. Like, all the way till... The, the end. There's a whole other drop in that ride. Well, I mean, there's also a restaurant. Well, no. What, no, <laughs> that, you, no, you were past the restaurant. The restaurant's only in the beginning. The Blue Bayou. That's in the very beginning. You get on the boat. You trust me. I love me some D Land. Uh, although um, I haven't been, I have been banned from Disneyland. Clearly not for this. What so did you get banned I, for? I got banned for this. I haven't gone back. Wait, 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 wait. So they knew you guys did it. We got caught. What? Uh, so wait. the ride ends, and as our boat docks, there's a cleanup crew. And the guy's holding a mop. Another guy's holding Windex and paper towels. And oh my they God. made me clean the boat. And then they took me into Disney prison. Disney jail. Disney jail. You went to Disney jail and they for took my picture. Of the Caribbean. And you've been banned ever since. And I'm banned from Disneyland. Oh my God. That's so sad. <laughs> It's the happiest place on earth. Yeah. It's now the only place I can't go on earth. Uh, have, can you go to Disney World, or is it like oh, a sure worldwide band? You've never even tried. I haven't, I haven't. I mean, they might have. It might be like a. There, there might be a mugshot of you, eighteen-year-old you. Like, look out for this bitch. You, <laughs> <laughs> don't let her in this park either. There's definitely you can a try to go shot. to like Tokyo Disney, and they're like, no, 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 sorry, no. We know what you did. Ooh, yeah. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's impressive and also sad. Well, I was looking for you to top my story. I can't. That's I don't know that anybody can top. I mean, honestly, <laughs> sex in public stories, like I've never heard a better sex in public story. Well, then, hey, that's a compliment. I'll take it. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll ask you one more of my main course questions. Uh, do you... We're almost done with the main course? Jeez Louise. I know. All this right. is only a 30-minute podcast. Is it really? I know. Chug your coffee. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, how... If, let's say that your significant other is gaining weight. How do you tell them they're getting fat? Um, delicately? Um, no, I don't know. I mean, I guess I would just be like, I, you know, well, first and foremost, I think what I would try to do is just be, I don't know, conscientious of where they're at in their life and if they're going through stuff and, you know, like. You're so loving. Isn't that what we're all supposed to be? Yeah. If we're all that more, the world would be a lot better, I think. Um, which is also not to say that sometimes we don't need to throw some smack down because some people are just, you know, needing yeah. a good smack. But to me, that's hopefully an extension of love. Like, hey, wake the fuck up. You're being an asshole, you know. But also you're still deserving of love. But sometimes you need to get smacked. Like, like you know, as a kid, like, I, I don't know. I mean, I know that. I know that there's a lot of like more new age kind of concepts about spanking your kids or not spanking your kids or whatever. Listen, as a kid, I fucking hated it. Obviously, my mom broke multiple wooden spoons on my ass. But in hindsight, I'm grateful for it because it actually kept me from doing some stupid shit that a kid doesn't understand. In that same vein, I think sometimes we need to course correct people, but it should still always be done in love. When it comes to a significant other I don't know, letting themselves go and not taking care of themselves. I think that's where you need to, you need to start there. You need to go and be like, Hey, are you loving yourself? It does. It doesn't seem if, if in fact they were, they were healthy and happy and fit and whatever they were before. And now they're not, there's a root thing in there. And so just, you know, coming at somebody and be like, yeah, you're fat. Like, obviously that's not going to help yeah. the situation, you know? So you got to come into it from more of a place of empathy and being like, Hey, but also, if you're with somebody, why are you waiting until they've like fully let themselves go? Why don't you, you should both be in each other's lives on a regular basis and encouraging each other to be healthy. So I, I would hope that I'm not even getting to that place where it's like, hey, yo, <laughs> <Great> <laughs> what answer. happened? You yeah. know what I mean? Yikes. You yeah. just wake up one morning and you're like, mm. Yeah. 
Um, would you consider yourself romantic? Oh, yeah. Very. So my dessert question for you. What is the sweetest thing you've ever done for a partner? What's the sweetest thing? Just been there. <laughs> um, I'm the best. So me just showing up is sweet enough. Um, I don't know. What is the sweetest thing I've done for somebody? Um, that's a really good question. I mean, the truth is, I'm not. I I I, I haven't really been in that many relationships. Like, I'm, really? No, no. What's the longest relationship you've ever been in? Like off and on for five years, but it was off and on. How do you know when a relationship is over? Are they ever? Um, no, I don't know. It's it, well. I mean, look. Clearly, there are things that are the ends of relationships. Like if somebody cheats on somebody, or um, is you know clearly has clearly lost their mind, or is abusive, or something like that. Which for some people is still not an indicator enough because people stay in abusive relationships. Um, but listen, way back in the day, I was a hopeless romantic. I would surprise my girlfriends with flowers and presents and, you know, show up at work, at their work and stuff. But that's a red flag. It's a red. Yeah, it was. It was. No, no, seriously. <laughs> it was. I was love bombing them and I didn't realize that I was. And I was love bombing them because I didn't love myself and I didn't realize that I needed their love. And so I was trying to be what I was hoping they would be for me. But also, I don't think I even really understood what love was until about six years ago when I had a complete mental breakdown, which is why I wrote my book. I mean, that, that was the, the book is all about me having a, I literally moved to Austin six years ago with all these big dreams of building this movie studio, living community, bought all this land out east of town and, uh, and had a total mental breakdown and didn't realize that I basically had been going for 37 years of life and I didn't even know what it meant to love myself. So all of the love that I thought that I felt for all of these girls in the past, certainly some of that was real love, but a lot of that was a deep insecurity or desire to be loved. And so I think a lot of people do that. And in, 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 in an attempt to try to feel love ourselves, we will go and love bomb. We will go and give all this love to somebody because we're trying to somehow instigate the reciprocity of that. Um, and so I did that a lot when I was younger and it, shocker didn't work. Yeah. At like my, you know, I, I would date a girl for like four months and they're like, deuces, <laughs> like can't, can't handle it. And it would devastate me. I'd be so wrecked. Um, but I knew deep down, like I've always been somebody who deeply loves. Like I, I, I know like one of my purposes on this earth is to go and love people like legitimately. So what's the difference between how you used to love and how you love now? Well, I, I think I think what it, what it means to love now is it has to start with you. You have got to love yourself first. Otherwise, well, otherwise you're 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 it's a it's a a semblance of it's a it's a a version of love, but you don't it doesn't have healthy boundaries in it. And healthy boundaries are absolutely necessary to love someone in a healthy way. So what I what love feels like now is far less of this romantic, like oh my god, you know that kind of thing. Although I don't know, I mean, I, maybe I just haven't met that. I've been still trying to wait. I mean, I don't know. I would love to find whoever my ride or die is. I don't know. I don't A know. Big booty bitch. Big booty bitch. <laughs> Thick with three C's, y'all. Like, what are we even talking about? Um, but yeah, I and and I think that when I do, then there'll definitely be a much more of like, a, I want to, more of an inclination to want to go and kind of be that extra romantic or not love bomb, but you know, like do do things similar ish or whatever. Um, but they'll be much more measured and much more, I don't know, rational, yeah. much more adult, much more. Um, not acting out of my own insecurity or need for love, but rather simply like, I just fucking love this girl. I just love her. And I want to be able to be there for her and show up for her and, and vice versa, you know? Yeah. Um, so let's recap your red flags. <laughs> <laughs> Entitlement. 
arrogance, uh, unawareness. That's another one. I think b- people that are just like unaware, I, 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 I can't, I can't handle. Um, but I think that also kind of comes, goes along with entitlement. People who are entitled don't feel like they need to be aware of other people's needs or what's going on. Yeah. Um, also if you don't have a sense of humor out, um, what else? Um, I don't know. Like those things. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think your red flags are? Like what people need to look out for in me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know. They're all a little maroon, really. Um, <laughs> shades of pink. Shades of pink. Like a hot pink. Hot pink flag. You shout out whores Instagrams. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a red flag? I feel like I'm doing the world a service. <laughs> That's a service. I'm telling everybody, look out for fucking <laughs> yo hoes over here. Look out. Um, if... If your bitch been banned from Disneyland, you know you got a problem. Um, uh, no, I don't know. What are my red flags? Um, listen, I'm still definitely working on me. For, yeah. No doubt. Which no is doubt. a green flag. That's well, like such a, yeah, a positive a green, it's, thing. Yeah, it's a green flag. Um, I, I Probably my, my the biggest red, red flag for me is that I am never in one place longer than a couple of weeks right now. Like My life has me bouncing around and traveling everywhere. And that's very difficult to... Like, even if you find somebody who's great, how do you then consistently woo them, date them, have a yeah. norm, any kind of normalcy at all? I mean, it's part of the reason why I wanted to build a movie studio in my backyard because I'm so sick of getting shipped all over the world to go do these jobs. And every time I do, it's like, you know, peace. See you when I see you. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's not healthy. It's not good. You can't, not only can you not build a relationship with someone special, you can't build a community. So I don't know. So yeah, a red flag if you know <laughs> if a girl's looking at me, it's like, hey, I'm not gonna be around much long. You know, it's, it's you like, sound a lot more positive than negative. I hope so. I'd have you back on a second date. I like that. Definitely. All right. Um, we'll check out your book. Is there where can people find you? At Zachary Levi on Instagram and on Twitter. I have no other social media. Thank you for coming on my show. Thanks. I had a great first date. We'll see you next time. First date. Drinking a glass of milk with dinner? First day.